quarreling, inciting conversations, or even heating or stoking the polity. Now, to broaden the scope of our conversation this morning, we're joined by an officer of the Fort Estate of the Rem and a public affairs analyst from the People's Reporter this morning, Honorable Desmond Fowobi Olariwaju. Good morning to you, Desmond. Uh, good morning, Vito, and good morning, Nigerians. Uh, I'm happy to be here with you this morning to review uh, the national dailies. Well, good morning to you too as well, uh, Honorable Desmond. Let's quickly set the ball rolling. August 1st is around the corner. Yeah. Reactions are pouring in both locally and internationally. Uh, senators, reps, you know, are leading the mediation to avert the protest. Even the Speaker, House of Representatives, Honorable Tajuddin Abbas, has made a comment. Uh, Janar Tul Nasser Islam has made a comment, and Ohane Zendibo are also speaking out. Uh, there's so much tension in the air. Yeah. What is your reaction to this this morning? Uh, normally, Nigeria is not the only country where you would have uh, people, you know, uh, seek redress or dissatisfaction over policy direction or governance. But the reason why this particular Nigerian scenario is galvanizing a lot of our, our interests is basically because of our antecedents and our history with protests. Uh, protests has not been anything very, you know, uh, uh, seamless, peaceful, and good based on our history with reference to what has happened even to the recent one, the 2020 Hensas protest. Yes. So because of that uh, situation, and that is why you see that everybody is interested, suddenly we want to talk about the protest, the presidency, the people, the concerned Nigerians, you know, in Nigeria and in the diaspora, everybody is speaking about the protest because of what protests always resolved into exactly. or always escalates into in Nigeria. And what is that? A protest in Nigeria always ends in violence because of mismanagement by both actors and the government. So that is the reason. So I am happy that we have somebody like Ashwa Jubala Amechunubu who has always been in the front runner of protest, leading protest, right from his time. He has led strong protest against the military in 1993, also in 2012 against uh, subsidy removal, uh, proposed planned subsidy removal by good luck in Billy Jonathan. So I believe because he has been involved in protest, I believe that having him at the helms of affairs, because I want to believe that the reason why protest has always end or go uh, very badly in this part of the world is because of mismanagement by both government and the now, now talking about management of the protest a lot of people are citing the way the former president dr goodluck ibele jonathan handled the occupy nigeria protest yeah. not using brute force to get protesters off the streets and many would say in recent times this is one of the protests that in turn ugly in terms of any casualties or accusations of brutality against protesters yes. uh, many continue to make mention of him in in terms of ways in which you can engage in youth dialogue or even allow persons to go about protesting without having to use brute force to dissuade protests like i tell you uh, earlier while i was making my remark is that it takes the responsibility it is a res it shared responsibility between both the government and the people the actors who are protesting for you to have a peaceful and a seamless protest. It has your responsibility. And good luck, Ebilo Jonathan is a good example because of his nature and his countenance. Good luck is not is one of the people or one of the presidents that the Nigerians can actually record as somebody who is uh, a peaceful nature. He has this peaceful gestation and peaceful disposition. And some people even see his peacefulness has weakness because they say that he's not a man that can hold firm political decisions. You know, those are some of the things that you know that was characterized by good luck in Billy Jonathan. Now, fast tracking to 2024, where we have Ashiwa Jibola Ahmed Chinumbu at the helms of affairs. I want to believe because he understood what can actually happen. He understood that protests are capable of being hijacked. And in the last few days, I love the dimension and the way the presidency is approaching these 
our protest. Yes. When it has become glaring, when it has become so clear that there is no turning back, that protest is going to hold. I am never a proponent of protest. I have never spoke in support of the protest. But that is not to say that it is not within the ambit. It is within the ambit of law that Nigeria is under the Constitution, 1999 Constitution has amended, that Nigeria have the right to assemble, right to, you know, to association. Assemble means coming together to speak or to, to, to request for certain uh, responsibility from the government or change of policy from the government. I haven't said that. We need to also put into serious consideration because this protest is coming at the wrong time. It's coming in the period where Nigerians are living in anguish poverty. There is hardship, there is untold hardship, there is suffering orchestrated by the fresh subsidy remover floating of our era. And presently we're having fresh scarcity in the country. So many things are not going high in electricity tariff, inflation, and inflation. inflation. So Nigeria is going through a lot. So government need extra effort to manage this protest so we can have a peaceful protest. Government should, in this particular situation, try to cooperate with this bull. Yes, that is not to say that there are not tendencies of people who may want to hijack and Polit uh, protest naturally is political. Yes. There are people who want to take advantage, so government needs to be on their game. This is the best time. Government needs to show capacity. They need to show responsibility. Our security agencies and architectures needs to be on the game. This is not time to play politics with this protest. Now, yeah, talking about the political tendencies of this particular protest, at a time where a lot of organizations, both religious organizations, student unions, labor, the labor union are all washing their hands off, you know, backing the protest, we have the likes of Atiku Abubakar and, you know, Peter, Peter Obi backing the protesters. In fact, there is a story this morning mm -hmm. where Peter Obi revealed who the protesters are. Are we? Is this a confirmation to the allegations that have been made and the fingers that have been pointed towards Peter Obi and, and the Labour Party all this while? Yeah, um, you know, even if you listen to the interview in Granted Channels yesterday, you will find out that he's a little bit diplomatic and he's just speaking like one of the Nigerian people. He was not speaking as a sponsor. I listened to that interview was only speaking generally that Nigerians with this level of hardship that they are going through, they have the right to protest that it is under their right and under their you're speaking just like every other Nigerians. But the point I want to establish here is that government has done very well. We must give kudos to this president or to this federal government. In what terms? I'm not saying that they are delivering presently the dividend of democracy or there is heavy, enviable, you know, sources that can be pointed at based on the policies. But the fact that the government is engaging, engaging, do you know that there have been series of engagement within just in the last eight days? The federal government has met with traditional rulers, it has met with the leaders of ethnic groups, APC chiefs, APC religious leaders, and they are still meeting. They are meeting with stakeholders. They are talking with stakeholders. And that is why you see the sudden pullout of NLC, NANS, and some other leaders uh, of thoughts unions, that yes. they won't be part of the protest. The reason because government is engaging seriously. And that is what is expected from a democratic government. You need to engage. People have the right to express their grievances. People have the right to express displeasure over policy not even this particular one that is facing that is glaring us in our face a lot of hunger here and there i'm not saying that people do not have a right but the fact that government has been on top of the game just on the first of august the parliament under the leadership of uh abbas tajuddin abbas yes. right honorable tajuddin abbas the speaker of the tenth assembly is also engaging with youth across the federation at the National Assembly complex there, you know, to speak, to engage, to dialogue, to look at some of the policies and see how they can create the legislative framework 
to see how they can cushion the effect of what they are going to do. That is what governance is about. Like I told you before, the people and the government, they are supposed to be partners in progress. They are supposed to be negotiating. You know, it is not supposed to be government for. It's supposed to be government of. Government that people are part of. Yeah, exactly. You don't give governance because you don't know their aspirations. You don't know their yearnings. But with engagement, you will be able to know that this is what their demands are. You know, you don't do things for people because this is what you think is good in democracy. In democracy, you do things based on popular demand. Some of the ideas, some of the policies, some of the things you're bringing aboard might not be what I need. And that's why I said earlier, government has got it wrong from different, um, from my view, you know. Uh, it is where, not where, where do you think they have gotten it wrong? Yeah, from? you see, let me tell you, Peter Obi, Atiku Abubakar, Kwakwaso, all the presidential candidates agrees to the fact that subsidy must go. And yeah. there must be floated. Yes. Subsidy so for they, they, have, they subsidy all have the where? same policy. So let's explain to Nigerians. Subsidy to of where and subsidy of, the, of Nera must go. Those are the two things that has been eating our economy because only few people, less than 10%, less than even 2% of the, of the country's total population are the ones that have been feeding fat on money subs on Nera subsidy and fuel subsidy. So all of them agree. But where I have my conflicts or my issues with delivery of the removal of subsidy is that not having a proper planning. You know, a reasonable government that is prepared for governance and have a better understanding of what governance is all about wouldn't take that decision. And they had their own uh, justification is that the sub the budget that is going into that year from May from June that subsidy has already been removed by the outgoing president uh, uh, Momodou Momodou Buhari. Buhari, yeah. Now the point is this: we know that there can be amendments to appropriation. We call it supplementary budget. Yes. What is expected? That is not. I'm not buying that. Some can buy that, but I cannot buy that because President Bola Amatinumbu have the right, have the constitutional right as, as to send a bill to the National um, Assembly to make an amendment, a supplementary budget to make provision for subsidy. Now, why do you need to pay subsidy for some time? So that you can set up your cabinet, understand the cabinet, understand what the yearnings of the people are. For me, people believe that this decision is unilaterally decided. And it is not the aspiration of the people you want to govern. And that is why it's shocking. The decision is now shocking. And all this why government is just come to see how they can cushion the effect. All these interventions are not, are not working. Well, well let, let, let me take you back a little bit. Uh, there is um, a statement about, uh, or some people share a sentiment that the protest itself, that the government is politicizing the protest. And at the same time, criminali criminalizing it. It's one thing to politicize mm -hmm. it. We all know. The, the, the facts are there. The, the picture is very glaring to the eyes. However, in terms of criminalizing it, uh, don't you think it's, it's rather a wrong move? It is a wrong move if that exists. For me, well, I've not course, seen. I've not seen that. I've not seen. I've not seen. Because uh, there have been comments from the DSS, no, no, uh, the, the, the defense headquarters, the police, IGP. Everybody is talking. What was about, their comments? Well, criminalizing it in the sense that they are calling for a complete uh, deterrence from from the protest. No, 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 that was now, now let's also pick up some papers to That's see the position of the police this morning as well. Yeah, let's do. Now the next three papers look at the position of law enforcement whilst there are different opinions by Nigerians on where they stand as a, regards the August 1st protest, this day newspaper and its accompanying papers this morning look at the timelines for what the presidency says is a commitment to addressing Nigeria's economic yearnings. Let's pick them up this morning as we look at this day, the Daily Times and the New Telegraph. Now, quite strategically placed on this day newspaper, you look at the report from Finch saying inflation has peaked in Nigeria will moderate below 25% by year-end. Now, that's a timeline. By the end of 2024, and Nigerians are, by this report, asked to be a little bit more patient. Now, beneath the masthead, you see presidency, Tinubu's government will put Nigeria on sound economic footing despite problems. Now, it's three days to the nationwide protest. Nigerians still divided on the action. Now, you look at the Daily Times and the New Telegraph. The police are asking for details of the organizers. They are insisting that the organizers need to be registered. 
and they also say this is from more from a perspective of being able to provide boots on ground to ensure that the protest is not hijacked now when you look at more reports on the new telegraph it says government at crossroads as tension rises over planned protests now three things are important and i'd like for us to walk yeah. through this timeline yeah 25 percent by the end of yeah. the year yeah with the comments from the presidency and now the need for registration of protesters yes. We've seen letters written to the FCT minister yes. requesting for the, the stadium. Of, yeah. uh, and in my thinking, I think the stadium, okay, it confined the, environment. It wasn't the stadium, it was the Eagle Square. Eagle Square. Eagle Square. Now, they were also saying that some barricades should be removed in case mm, they, they want, want to, to proceed the villa. to the villa. Now, and I'm thinking, what's, what's the intention beyond making this protest more public than strategic locations where the heart of power is located in the, in the capital nation? Protect in each senses is not something you are supposed to do in the hidden. It is something that you need to do in the open so that the government or the concerned regulators can see that people are protesting. So if you are sending protesters to maybe hidden areas, the purpose has been defeated. But the only thing we are saying in this, you know, you don't have the right. When somebody is angry, protest is just like expression of anger in the most civil way. You know, when somebody is angry, you don't have control of their thoughts. When somebody is angry. So now, understand what protest is. Perhaps maybe the Nigerian police or the, the, the president, some members of the presidency do not understand what protests are. And that is why they are making some, you know, command. They are trying to tell protesters how they should go about their protest. It's because they do not understand that it is expression of dissatisfaction and anger. You don't have the right or to determine how they are going to protest. But the rights, the right of what you should advocate is peaceful assembled. Because that is what is ensured in 1999 constitution as amended. The constitution plays strong emphasis on peaceful words assembled. Sam. Peaceful assembled. And it is on that note that the Nigerian police needs to up their game. Because there is no way you have a lot of people gathered and you not expect some deviant behavior. And that was why I said ab initio that the federal government and the Nigerian police and the security architectures needs to be on top of their game. Now, now how commendable is it that some groups have penned down letters? Now, this yes. registration being Take it back group, like, take it back group. I saw a letter. letter by Damilare Adenola or something like that last week addressed to the Honorable Minister of FCT requesting for the use of the Eagle Square. And in that letter, there are some strong demand that was made. And I can only imagine the audacity of some of this to provoke the Honorable Minister. Imagine requesting for 24 hours electricity in that manner. And also requesting for, the, for, for toilets, for public toilets, in case they want to use the toilet. And lastly, requesting that they should be treated like diplomats and they should move the barricade you know that is blocking the hassle work should in case some protesters may want to advance into the villa well, the, the, it the, is the, sounding the, like a threat the already. honorable minister of the fct has has denied a, has denied that he has not received the, the letter yes and he has also gone ahead to say mm. that if they are at all going to use the eagle square they have to pay, pay. <laughs> you, see, you see this issue we should not joke we should not make a joke of this issue first it is impossible for the honorable minister to provide all those things you are requesting and number two it is impossible for these young people that are talking about hunger people that that don't have job to pay that millions of naira for that facility is not possible so now it is about responsibility governments needs to show responsibility whether government likes it or not government needs to be part of the protest in what way? In what way? By providing security. By ensuring that wherever these people gathered, there's enough policemen, there's enough member of the civil defense, Nigerian civil defense peace corps, and some members of the military far away from that zone, far away from the protesting zone. In case of hoodlums, women want to come and take advantage of the peaceful gathering of people because you always have that and i am not suspecting that this time around because in the previous government there are some members of the government who usually organize people to hijack for political gain yes but in this case i understand that Ashwajibola understood 
what protest is all about and the and the and the and what would happen when we allow some people to hijack that protest so what is now important for the government to do at this material time is to provide security and to also try to convince because you can't stop the protesters they will definitely come out first of august in in two days time they are going to come out to protest but what the government should do is that they should government should try to advocate for peaceful assembly peaceful assembly and emphasize str emphasize strongly to ensure that their assemblance there is peaceful and uh, another thing that uh, uh, Bito is that is very important when we are not looking at is that this government needs time we need to give a little bit more time there has been projection based on the trajectory of how things is going there have been projection that by december this year our economy will begin to have some some sign of relief you know we need to understand that before as actually you came into power we don't have an economy we do not we are living fake life people don't understand that nigeria woe did not begin in 2023 when Ashiwa Jibola met Tunubu took over power. Nigerian wars has begun long before independence, but with the bad uh, leadership we have from independence of 1960 till date, we have had the worst case of economy where we are living fake life. You borrow money to even pay subsidy for for where? subsidy for Naira and all that and we do not have any projection of growth that Nigeria economy right now we can now begin to have expectation we can now expect that by 2027 this is what the economy will look like by 2030 this is what the economy you can't do that before under the arrangement or the kind of economy that is being practiced Nigeria economy is just zig instability just, just wobbling. wobbling without any focus or direction but right now these are some of the hard time we're going to go through because just like somebody, a mother who goes into surgery, you are going to experience some level of pains in the course of surgical uh, practice. But at the end of the successful surgery, you are expected to have what they call relief. And, then you're, you're, and that is what we are going through so right you're, now. So you're of the opinion that the president and, and you know his government have given Nigerians realistic projections in the coming months yes years. i am of the i'm of the strong opinion but to crown it there is still much more to be done by this government this government to me why they are speaking as if they are serious and taking some tough decision there are tougher decisions that they need to take that will affect the president the decision that the president has taken and some of the members of his cabinet have taken has not in any way affected them has only affected the majority of the Nigerians. And when you say you want Nigerian to overcome this hardship, it has to be all encompassing and all inclusive. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what I expect the president to do. You need to cut down expenses. In cutting this down is expenses. not the time that the president should be ordering for SUVs for senators, SUV for himself. Why not use locally produced vehicles? vehicles. If the president can do that, I can say that this president is really, really serious. Most reason why Nigerians are going to protest is not because of subsidy removal, it's not because of floating of Nera, but because of commensurate effort is not coming from the presidency and people in power, and that is the anger that Nigerians are venging. Let's look at the lower executive chambers. You mm -hmm. cited and commended the speaker, Honorable Tajidina. For engagement. For engagement. For engagement. They, they took it a step further by also saying that in the next six months, they're going to drop their salaries by 50%. It is not by dropping salary, Bito. It is beyond dropping salary you know you don't rob peter to pay paul we understood the figure we understood the anomalies that goes around um committee activities yes when they go for oversight function they usually collect gather must go most honorables even the best of them when they go for oversight they have already made gather must go of loaded with cash that they are coming back with. If you think I'm lying, intercede them when they are coming back from their work. Search their vehicle, you will see cash, serious money that they collect from oversight function, whether for committee of army, committee of uh, petroleum, committee of any committee. So, so are you saying, saying it that? It is a fact. Now, what I'm saying is that, see, we cannot deceive everybody all the time. You can only deceive some people sometime. Why I am in tune with some of the policies of this government, 
At the same time, we must be firm. This country belongs to me, you and them. It's not only they that owns this country. Every one of us owns this country. And somebody like me that I am privy to some lesson to this information. I have evidence. I have facts to this thing. I have worked at the National Assembly as SLA, as it is, to different honorable. And I know what happens there. Now, it is beyond cutting down your salary. There are certain steps that people in position of leadership will take today and our fortune will change immediately for good. Some of those things is that you cut down your expenses. It's not just about salary. Number two, why do we have to keep renewing our offices every four years? Renovation. Renovation. And, and, and How do we, why do we keep buying uh, office equipment every year? Why do we keep buying systems, shares every year? Why do we keep buying renewing our cars every year? Every so there year? is no continuity. There or, is no continuity or, 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 and there is no items. proper account of how these things are being replaced or given to another person. We don't know what happened to what happened. Recurrent expenditure is very high, about 70 something percent. Under that kind of condition, Nigeria cannot go. And what is recurrent? This same thing we are talking about, servicing government. You are not actually going for capital uh, investment. You are only servicing governance. And that is why we are where we are. If capital infra infrastructure is 50% and recurrent infrastructure is 50%, that's where we can have what? Commensurable development in Nigeria. And Tunubu can only do that. Only when he makes a strong statement. Now, Tunubu can't do that because he's also guilty. The president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is also guilty. We are talking about using made in Nigeria. How much more made in Nigeria is presidency, the state house are using? We have innocent vehicles. Why are they not engaging innocent? Why are we no longer using Pijo? Why, why don't we have an asset? Even if you cannot produce a vehicle, if you can assemble in Nigeria, I it mean, will there, reduce. There used, a, there used to be an assembly plant in Kaduna. There used to be Kaduna. assembly plant even in Vox, in Lagos, in Kaduna, in so many parts of Nigeria. But because of we have not been able to show leadership, and that is why we are where we are today. Where well, I'm hugging Mr. President. This is the best advice I can give to Mr. President today. If truly Mr. President wants to stop protesters from going out there to express dissatisfaction and to do that within the ambit of law, of conducting themselves to be peaceful, the government needs to start making some silent positions that are not political. For example, cutting down Leading by example that hi, Mr. President, actually what you mentioned, Nubu, this is how much, how much, how much that is being accrued to state house. But because I have benefited from the system, I am who I am today from the system. I want to cut that down. I'm not going to be using exorbitant vehicles again. I'm not going to be importing cars every year. I'm not going to spend billions of naira importing aircraft and all that. I'm going to make do with what is that. But all those things looks like childish. When I talk like this, they'll say you are talking. <laughs> childishly well, 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 because well, they well, cannot do it well, well honorable desmond let me hold you there mm. and, and let's also look at this protest from the mm. security uh point of view mm. we have highlighted the the local comments coming in from from legislators from yeah. uh, you know uh, religious leaders student unions and the rest however there is a report on the punch newspaper and i'll quickly take uh the uh, punch newspaper this morning captured on the front page of the punch newspaper just below uh, the masthead it reads with the catchphrase hardship protest US UK Canada issue security alerts traders fear looting yes the right uh, the strap line there says foreign missions foresee violence as yes. FG or be differ on protest sponsors yeah this is rather becoming more serious than most people who or initially thought about it yeah. in fact the international community has eyes on nigeria currently and it seems like we are we are anticipating a, a, a huge blow on both the economy on the security of lives of people on the safety of properties what do you make of this, uh, Honorable Deputy? Uh, you see, government has to be hundred percent. You don't. You are not. You are not supposed to be good in the morning and be bad at night. You are supposed to be good all the time. You need to be paying attention to governance. At you have to. Your tax or your responsibility is delivering good governance at all time. You can't say you are making this decision like me. I will never go for protest because I anticipated that Nigerians will have to suffer before they can enjoy. Yes. I knew that. 
some may not know but i knew that the decision that mr president took why it has a long time or a sustainable gain in the interim nigerians will have to pay the bitter price i knew that and that is why there is no justification whatsoever for me to join the protest the protest is is senseless to somebody like me do you know why it is senseless why, why? only senseless to me because i understood the decision that president took and i know the gain of his decision at the long run but a lot of nigerians only see hardship i already foresaw hardship long ago not even when he got into power as at the time that we are exploring literature doing research to understand what these policies the pros and cons of these policies we already knew that there will be inflation we already knew there will be forced scarcity we already knew that people will die of starvation and hunger we already knew but why we have this understanding my major challenge is that if an a citizen ordinary citizen like me can have access to this kind of information and i am already preparing ahead planning ahead what stopped the government for putting in measures to cushion the effect of the of the policies is it that they are not thinking or they don't understand the policy that is my own problem. Now let's 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 okay because of time let's also factor mm. in all the developing stories on the dailies now like you're rightly buttressed nigeria is not where it is because of a lack of policy formulation or legislature the guardian newspaper looks at the nnpc the sole importer mm. of petroleum into the country at two years after the PIA was implemented, mm. are struggling with some of the teething issues, commercialization, JV debts, and uh, a loan of over $4.3 billion. Now, and whilst the NNPC's leadership has seen a second term of its GCO Mielekari, it looks at it from the angle of, does the NNPC need an overhaul or total house cleaning to get its act in order? It's not house cleaning overhaul. That institution is one of the reason Nigeria is impoverished. NMPC, I can say this with bold statement, that NMPC is one of the cause of the hardship that Nigeria and Pakistan are going through. You don't, you know, for over 50 years, NMPC have been selling crude. They need to give an account, even before it's overhaul, before it will be splashed, it will be squashed away. NMPC, the leadership, if they are still alive, people that have been at the helms of affairs, in the last 30 years, if they are still alive, they need to face a panel of inquiries to explain to Nigeria what has happened to our crude money. Why has NMPC supervised oil theft? Why has oil NMPC supervised high level of, you know, fantastically corrupt activities within its ambit? They need to face Nigeria. They need to explain to Nigeria because this institution is the life wire of the nation. And they have what it takes to make Nigeria sit as one of the best countries in the world. But because of selfish interest and self-aggrandizement, they have diverted public and common wealth into their private pocket. It is a known fact that NMPC is doing less, doing worse than what is expected of it. If NMPC sits up today, the Nigerian economy will sit up. Do you know the level of corruption? that has bedeviled NMPC and that is why just house cleaning may not help we need a total overhaul but before that the people who have been managing NMPC in the last 30 years need, need to, to explain account. to Nigeria why is our refinery is not working they need to explain in the last 20 years 12 trillion naira has been spent in what over uh, revamp uh, revamping uh, refurbishing maintaining overall maintenance of NMPC and yet it's not working those people should not be allowed to go scot free they should be made to face the rot of law they should be able to explain to Nigeria what really happened and all the ministers so if actually likes it uh, Buhari likes it all the people that have claimed to be the minister all of them need to ask that question the challenge yeah. is mm. not because there's nobody saddled the responsibility of issuing some everybody is a corporate let me tell you the truth let me tell you you see this country is a great country and i wonder why some of our leaders are so callous and they see evil and they buy into evil enjoy evil it is a an orchestrated and a systematic arrangement no one person is innocent everybody is a culprit it's not possible for you to thief for in this country could it is impossible for one person there must be what accomplices there must be an orchestrated master planning you know by everybody involved before you can successfully steal just one barrel 
But here in Nigeria, millions of barrels have been stolen. And uh, you want to say, or you want to pretend that you don't know. And that is why I am speaking to from the bottom to top, from top to bottom, that they need to save this country. Enough of politics. Haven't they stolen enough? They've stolen enough. Thank you for stealing. Now, let that people go. Let Nigerian economy go. Let Nigeria economy break. Don't suffocate Nigerians by continuance of the stealing that is going on in the NNPC. You know, it, it seemed like a, a beacon of, of hope when the NNPC was, you know, made public and, and became a, 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 a private public, limited. A private, uh, limited under the supervision of government. A, exactly. So what under, does it make? under the supervision of the Doesn't government. Doesn't make any meaning. Just people, people thought that this will bring about a huge change to the oil sector in the country. However, now, we, we are seeing a completely different out on it, and it's like it's a downward spiral since then. Nigeria, for so many years, we've sold so many government institutions. We've sold our NITA, our telecommunication sector. We even sold our electricity, but we have refused to sell NNPC. Why? Because that is any big people. If you see a billionaire in Nigeria, a trillionaire in dollar in Nigeria, know that one way or the other is also benefiting or making his money from NNPC. Most of those big, big people you see in Nigeria, they are people who have done one business or the other in the NNPC. And the reason why they are going or getting so rich is because NNPC provide the opportunity to steal huge amount of money and nobody's going to hold you responsible. But I'm saying that we have had our share of bad governance. Actually, Jubola and Metunubu have heard in so many fora that he has what they call will power. Will power to effect positive change. And I'm saying to Mr. President, it is glaring that truly, sir, if you want to make a change and you want to write your name with golden pen, sir, do not close your eyes to corruption. Do not cede to the benefits of corruption. You have to open your eyes and you have to make strong statements against shady deals. This governance and transparency, accountability does not require rocket science. The reason why it is difficult and complicated is because of interest or power that be. The president himself is not free, is not saint, is not a saint, one way or the other, even if it is not directly involved, some people around him are involved. In this stealing. So what we are saying now is that the president needs to make strong statement that enough is enough. We are fed fat. We have enough money. Now let's cut off this stealing and all that. It is just this. I mean, if the government can stand today, Mr. President, number one president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, can stand today that enough is enough. We are no more stealing. So you are calling for a complete privatization of NNPC uh, without any form of government interference. Yes, but that will be difficult because that is the only life wire of this country. But before we get to that level. First of all, government need to do a U-turn, not amendment, not to shape, complete, not to, complete U-turn. U-turn that we don't want to steal again. Once they make up their mind together, we don't <laughs> want to steal again. Honorable Desmond, mm. we're running short of time here. Yes. A little less than 10 minutes. Yes. Away from emphasis on the federal government, mm. there are issues in the news this morning as it concerns some states mm. where a lawmaker, an ex-local government chairman, and a district head were Involved. all nabbed in kidnapping. It's published on the Daily Trust newspaper. Mm. Well, you've called about the need for transparency and accountability at the federal level. Now, at the state level, particularly in Zamfara State, has been de uh, bedeviled with insecurity for a long time. How worrisome is it that highly placed Profile. individuals yeah. like this are part of a kidnap kidnapping ring uh, kingpin? You see, let me tell you, society is like a circle. What goes around comes around. While it is behoof on our leaders, to teach the younger generation. Don't forget that the younger generation will also go to become leaders. So in society, behavior is something that people learn. And then people learn by example. The Bible says, teach a child the way it should go. And, lead, and learning from children is by example. What they see, the leaders does. That's what they will do. Now let me tell you, how these people, you see, they are a reflection of the society. The current state of Nigeria is in decay. Our psyche, our orientation, our value system. This country, Nigeria, a lot of people believe that the only reason, the only way you can be celebrated is when you have so much money, even when you cannot provide a clear definition of the source of your money. So everybody, our psyche, our national psyche now that needs to be changed is that you need to be rich. 
you need to make money. You just need to be part of them. You just need to be celebrated as a billionaire, as a millionaire. Whatever you will do, that is our national calling, our national sight now, as a national value. I'm just telling you, if you go to the street now in primary school, ask anybody who he wants to be. He doesn't want to be a doctor. He wants to be a billionaire. And he doesn't know what it takes to be a billionaire. Everybody wants to be rich. The local government chairman, the president, uh, president of our association, governors, senators, and all that. Everybody just want to make the money. So if um, any lucrative business, whether it is criminal in nature or not, as long as it can bring the money, kidnapping is the least of it. What about bank banditry, organized terrorism? For, for the for the sake of still fulfilling that righteousness I mean, of making the, the, money, this, this go these two go hand in hand, banditry and kidnapping. Thank you. That is where not in the northwest. It is not country. for. They are not doing it because they don't like the country. They are doing it because it is a lucrative venture for them to make money, and because the society is interested in celebrating people who have money. They don't want to celebrate people like you. They don't want to celebrate anybody. They just want to celebrate people that have money, and that is why if you go to the internet now, you see that the worst of us are now selected more influential and celebrated by the society because something is wrong with our national orientation everybody want to make money without explaining in the olden days when you go to school you come back with a, a pen a bio that your mom did not buy for you you will ask you will ask a question where you got that bio from but today you'll be celebrated and the one student that goes to university to polytechnic and come back from polytechnic with a with suv with boys is now celebrated as the king of boys in his family. All this kind of orientation is the reason why a, a local government councillor, a local government chairman, a governor will connive with band with gang to cause havoc for money in, for for I, the sake of making I, I money. I mean, there, there, there are ground soldiers who carry out these dirty businesses, right? Mm. Where, where do we? place the issue of poverty in the mix of all of this <laughs> poverty is the main is the center focus of every misbehavior you're seeing and let me tell you people don't even understand what poverty is and that is why some people are interested in stealing money that they don't they do not need you know it is now beyond poverty it's about the value the national value system a lot of people are interested in making so much money that they don't now need and that's why you see them in parties, they are throwing money. You see some people, you're celebrating somebody that brings about 100 million and is just throwing money up. Talking about Nobody about makes about money million. genuinely. Nobody makes money genuinely and flimp the money in parties. Very when you see anybody that flimp money like this in party, is one of the uh, people who are sponsoring evil in the society. Uh, very quickly, gentlemen, talking about 100, that figure is very prominent this morning <laughs> as the Social Economic Rights and Accountability <laughs> Project, Sarah is also suing CBN over what it says is a hundred billion Naira Yeeson in dirty notes. We had earlier looked at it on the front page of the Matrix. And now to wrap up our conversations on a review of local papers, let's look at this infographics as granted to us by the Premium Times. On the Premium Times this morning, you'd find the face of the CBN governor, Mr. Uluyemi Kadoso, with the story accompanying it, Serap has filed a lawsuit against the CBN over the failure to account for and explain the whereabouts of over 100 billion naira dirty and bad notes and other large sum of cash awaiting examination mm. the attorney general of the federation is the one who has much concerns on this issue and many would have thought that the mfla gate season is over it's not over it's not over you see this particular money that we're talking about is not actually something that happened within this administration it was the money that were mapped from the society during the era of uh, emifile during the tenure of uh Bwari. and um, this money you know normally they're supposed to make a proper account of this money that they want to renew change you understand right now that money is still missing and nobody is providing clear information of where 100 billion is and you know there was an accusation before that the cbn was printing new nera notes without properly incorporating it into the economy and taking away this properly this 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 disposing the whole the bad whole notes yeah. now they still bring the bad notes and the new notes into the, the market the into the circulation and from the back they are now diverting that money into their own private pocket. And that's why Syrup is suing them. And 
if the government is not abating evil, the government should come out if they have not benefited because it looks like this government also benefited from that money. You understand? You know, government is continual. So we need the government to be transparent. Governance is not s difficult. Seriously, you and I can, can deliver good governance if only we have these indi indices. Transparency, accountability, and empathy on the people. The CBN needs to come out clear terms and tell us where is this money? It don't need to be sued. Tell us where the money is. Nigeria will take it off from there. Well, I must thank you, Honorable Desmond, for making our time to review headline stories as published on our local papers this morning. We appreciate you. It is a pleasure.